Hello there my lovelies. For today's video I've got something a little bit special. Um, this video is actually dedicated to Markiplier. Um, if you're watching, hi Mark. <laughs> this is really embarrassing. Um, if you guys don't know who Markiplier is, um, he's a very influential sort of um, person on YouTube um, with regards to the sort of video game community. Um, he does a lot of um, work with charities and events and um, the main reason I subscribe to him is because I think his videos are hilarious. <laughs> so um, this is for you Mark, for all the times that um, I've had a bad day and watching your videos made me laugh or smile or crack up um, with my husband. <laughs> We are both very big fans of yours and because of that we wanted to make something special for you. So we heard that you were in hospital a while back and um, I actually watched all of your little update videos to see how you were doing and uh, yeah we wanted to make something special um, for you. So here it is, the Wolf Stash Sword. Now obviously it's not finished yet. <laughs> um, so for those of you who would like to watch me make it, you can carry on and listen to me ramble on for a bit. Um, I'm going to skip a few um, steps in this process because I have actually made this um, style of sword before um, in a previous video when I hit 500 subscribers. So if you'd like to see a pure step-by-step -step video of how I made it, you can check out that link um, or you can carry on watching this one. So for those of you who are familiar with my um, first sword video, you will already know how I've made this, but I'm just going to run through the process very quickly. So if you want to make one at home, you're going to need a long cardboard tube of some sort. Which is going to be the main um, structure for your blade. And you're also going to need two toilet roll tubes. And this is what's under here. Basically you want to cut slits in them and then sticky tape them to your main cardboard tube. And as you can see here I've used a metric ton of sellotape <laughs> so you don't have to use as much sellotape as I have but I find it's easier to mould with and keeps everything secure. So for the bottom I have literally grabbed a plastic nozzle and I've also sellotaped that to the end and at the other end we have another cardboard tube just to reinforce the hilt. So. I'm sorry Mark if this is a really tiny sword, um, <laughs> obviously your hands are going to be bigger than mine, but I hope it's still okay. So that's the main structure for your sword, um, and now I'm going to add the blade and the extras. Okay, so Obviously in my previous video, um, if you've seen it, um, you'll be familiar with this uh, technique and if you're not, I'll just explain it very briefly. I've got two pieces of cardboard that I cut into um, very long pieces and you basically want to score down the middle so you've got about an inch gap and you only want to score, you do not want to cut all the way through just so it bends enough to form that kind of a shape. Now it's up to you how sort of flat or how pointy you want your sword to be. And this is going to be the housing for the top of your sword. So you're going to want a second piece, pretty much the same as the first. Um, again, scoring, I did an extra one in the middle so I cut three times 
to give it a more rounded feel rather than a point and this is going to be the underside of your sword and I've also rounded off the edges and if I just carefully move my sword over like so You'll see the two are going to neatly pop together like a cardboard sandwich. <laughs> so once you've got these pieces together, um, you can then start on your paper mache. So I'm just going to secure these and then we can get on with the next part. Okay, if I just pick this up. You can see that I've used a lot of tape again just to secure it because this is going to be a weak point of your sword if you don't. So that's all secure and don't worry about how, um, how it looks at the moment because we are going to be covering it up with paper mache um, so it will look a lot smoother and more polished after we're finished. So I'm just going to go and grab um, some PVA glue, mix it with a bit of water and some of my brown paper ready to cover it. So I've got my brown paper and my PVA glue so we are ready to cover up this bad boy. Okay, so I'm going to grab a bit of glue and I think I'm going to start at the top and you want to give it a good coating just going to start in that corner and then you can use any kind of paper really um, newspaper, um, I'm using uh, parcel paper and then you want to layer your glue again over it now, this will take a while to dry. I would advise that you leave it overnight to let it dry completely, but it'll have a nice shine to it and it will just make everything harder and keep it all together. layer on my next piece. It's just a simple case of repeating the process over and over. Okay. Really sorry Mark, this looks um, <laughs> nothing like a sword at the moment, but I promise you it will, it will. You just have to uh, have faith. <laughs> okay, tuck that bit under there. You just want to cover your whole sword in the paper mache and as I said you want to let it dry overnight until it's nice and um, ready for painting. As you can see my sword looks a lot different now 
so what I've done is um, I've left it to dry for 48 hours and the clay is nice and hard now so it's all dry and I've painted the blade with some silver metallic-y paint um, this has only got one coat I will put another coat on after I've finished the top half um, I've also added some jewels to the top of the stash and these are just um, glass beads that you can find in craft shops um, and decorating places so I attach them with some clay and all you have to do to get this effect is roll up two balls quite small of clay push them gently onto your hilt or the top of your sword and then take your bead and place them on top and gently press them into the clay not too far, just gently so they sit snugly in their little hole then you want to leave that to dry again um, for a few hours so that it doesn't move around and they're quite solid so now I'm going to start painting the rest of the sword and you can probably see here I'm not sure how it picks up on camera but it is actually fluorescent pink <laughs> And again, this is an acrylic paint. Okay. So I'm going to use this to paint the um, stash part. It's quite thick, so I'm only going to need one coat of this, I think. sure I get in all the little nooks okay now <laughs> for those of you who know me best I am by no means a pink sort of girl <laughs> so it's very unusual that I actually have pink paint um, in my flat but um, the reason I'm using pink is because um, Mark's famous moustache or wolf stash is pink um, his is actually a much lighter sort of um, girly pink than mine is, but this is what I had to hand, so I'm sorry Mark if <laughs> it's not quite the right shade, but I hope you'll forgive me. Okay, so I might have to switch to a smaller brush to do the fiddly parts around the gems bring it down here okay and around like that perfect okay And it's actually drying really fast because um, the clay, even though it's dry, um, it will absorb a lot of the moisture from the paint. So, depending on how much clay you uh, put around your sword, 
you'll have to work quite quickly. <laughs> it's so bright. <laughs> I might have to wear sunglasses just to uh, look at it. And underneath. Make sure I smooth out those little lumps. <laughs> and obviously I'll have to um, paint the underside as well, don't forget that, but I'll have to let it dry and paint the underside tomorrow I think. Missed a bit. Okay, so it's starting to look really funny, but I kind of like it. <laughs> So the last time I made um, a sword like this on my uh, subscriber special video um, I got a couple of comments and some messages about making uh, cosplay swords and uh, yeah I think I might actually make um, one of Urza's swords from Fairy Tail. Um, it's an anime if you don't know um, but I'm not sure which one because um, Urza, she's a female character, um, she's got so many swords. I'm not sure which one my favourite is, but um, if you guys have a favourite sword, um, I'd like to know actually. So if you have a favourite sword from a game or a movie um, or an anime, um, yeah, let me know. That would be interesting to see. Okay, so now I've finished painting this top part. I'm going to um, let it dry and then I'm going to use my brown to paint the handle part of my sword and we shall almost be finished. So I shall see you in a moment. Got my brown. I'm just gonna use it to paint the top here. And I'm using a, let me just get the paint off of it. I'm using quite a flat square brush for this part because it's very useful for getting neat and clean lines. Okay. Looks very shiny at the moment. Um, Usually when acrylic dries, it will dry um, to a matte finish, but if you want to keep your sword shiny looking, what you can do as an extra tip is, once it's completely dry, take some PVA glue and put a layer over your entire sword 
and then when it dries it will dry to a nice shiny finish so it's completely up to you okay so there's a little bit around there don't forget the ends Gonna zoom out for you. Okay. And there we have the painted sword. So we've got our finished painted sword, and as a funky little additional detail, I'm going to add a logo to the blade of the sword. I've got my pieces of paper that I've printed out. Just going to get a little bit of PVA. position these <laughs> correctly okay. so I'm just gonna push them gently on and then I'll add additional glue in the parts that I need sticking properly so next part and <laughs> if you are a fan of Mark you will probably already have guessed what this is A little bit fiddly. And just press it on. It needs a little bit more glue. touching up the corners okay. Mm. okay I think we're nearly there just press them down that they stay. <laughs> so that is actually um, Mark's logo. <laughs> so I thought it would be only appropriate that um, 
he has it on his sword. <laughs> There you have it, the Markiplier War Stash Toy Sword. Thank you all so much for watching and a shout out for Mark um, if you watched this video. Thank you so much for everything that you do, um, for entertaining and making us laugh and all the hard work that you do. So your fans really do appreciate it. Again, thank you all for watching and I shall see you in my next video. Bye guys.